one. There we go. Yeah, it's working. My two brothers and I visited our dear friend Ramon Sanford at the checkout line at the dollar store. It wasn't all that busy, and there was no music on the overhead speakers, which made the place more like a silent, solitary confinement than a workplace. Despite not being busy, there were at least two checkout lines open, with one being Ramon, and the other was some hot redhead two lanes next to him. She, like Ramon, was wearing one of those white aprons the store required you to wear, so we couldn't get an accurate depiction of her rack. She wasn't like anorexic thin or anything, with her puffed up cheeks, but her flowing curled red hair and her sweet smile gave off the impression that she was easy to talk to. We debated whether or not to take that lane instead, but we finally concluded to see Ramon so we could give him shit. Ramon was a Puerto Rican who wasn't easily identified. He was often mistaken for a black man. <laughs> Ramon was what I describe as a living cartoon character, with his goofy smile, goofy laugh, and all-around goofy personality incidentally inspired me to privately draw cartoon panels based off him. What set him apart from most people I knew was how determined he was to find a woman. And not just any woman. A beautiful woman to claim around his arm. I guess at this age, most people struggle to find the right significant other to spend the rest of their lives with. In Ramon's case, he was searching for the woman who was easy on the eyes across the breakfast table. Unfortunately for him, the women were searching for the same thing, and he just didn't get that. My brother Sam was the first to speak, and he said to Ramon, Hey Ramon, you goofy fuck. Hey, slice of pork. My brother Sam was the only brother out of the group with a full set of hair. It was believed he got that from mom's side of the family. He was exactly my height, and he was the middle brother of three. I was the youngest. My other brother Manny the man was the tallest, always sporting a leather jacket and a cocky demeanor. Although we had a family of smart asses, we always had each other's back. It was widely known that my brothers never approved of Char, and any woman who spent so long not giving it up to their mate was dead to them. Then Ramon added, It's not Ramon, he said with an accent. It's Ramon! Yeah, whatever, said Sam. Hey, who's that girl over there in the next lane? That's Amy. Why? Is she single? Who wants to know? That means yes. Then why the fuck haven't you asked her out yet? Better yet, why aren't you talking to her? You two are standing here bored and neither one of you has sparked a conversation yet. We talked. When? Before we got here? I swear to God, man, you have no game. Here, tell you what, give me your balls. You obviously don't use them. In fact, give me your dick also. It's attachable, right? I know some people who would actually use that dusty old thing. You could probably see the tumbleweeds rolling by. Then Ramon got mad, but he was still smiling and said, You know what? I'm tired of you. I'm going to go over there and ask her out right now. Ramon started jotting down something on a piece of receipt paper. Manny asked, What are you writing? My phone number. Sam asked, You're going to give her your phone number? Why aren't you just asking for it? Let me handle this, okay? I got this. Sam and Manny backed off as Ramon bravely walked over to Amy. The three of us watched as Ramon said something out of ear to her, and she just smiled. He handed her his phone number, and she accepted it. Manny commented, She accepted his phone number. Sam retorted, Yeah, but will she give him hers? We watched as they chatted and smirked, and the anticipation for my brothers was getting on the edge. Finally, Ramon walked back, and Manny announced, Nope. Ramon walked back with a big smile on his face and said, Now what, bitches? Sam responded, Good question. Now what? Is she going to call you because I didn't see a number being given back to you? She said she's going to text me tonight. She said she likes a man who isn't intimidated by her looks. Really? said Sam. Assuming that she texts you tonight and you go out on a date, Manny and I started laughing. Sam continued, I know, I know, let, let, let's humor this and, and say she is. Let's make a bet on how many dates Ramon will go on with this girl. I'll start. I'll just say, uh, one. He's gonna fuck up after one date. Ramon responded defensively, fuck you, Sam. God, I hate you. Manny, what would you say? Manny replied solemnly, I don't even see one. I'm sorry. But Manny, you have to suspend disbelief. Assume that she will text him and then go on a date with him. How many dates you see them on? Manny just concluded, I have to say one. I don't believe there will be one, but I will say one. Sam went to me and asked, Tyler, you've been quiet and all this. How many would you say? Well, I thought, I'm going to give Ramon the benefit of the doubt. So you think she's going to keep dating him? Asked Sam. <laughs> no, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm going to give him one, two dates, and then he's going to fuck it up. Then Ramon responded, fuck you, Tyler, you fat piece of ham. I'm going to prove all three of you assholes wrong. I'll even invite her over and she can tell you herself how many dates we've been on. 
Tell you what, said Sam. If you invite her over, let's say on your third date, and she tells us all in her own words that this is your third date, we all owe you $300. That's $100 each. I, I know Tyler doesn't have $100, so guess what? I have to fork over $200 to your sorry ass. I'm not worried, though, and you know why? I know I won't have to worry about losing $200 because your dumb ass is going to fuck this whole date up. God, I hate you, shouted Ramon. You've got me revved up now. Oh, oh, I can't wait to go on this date. <laughs>